Hi, I'm Chris. I'm a site manager here at RSP Resource Home. The, the one-up view behind you uh, shows the centre of our reserve from our visitor centre. Uh, so the islands behind, we've got um, uh, black-headed gulls and nests in here already. Uh, we're expecting uh, common terns back any moment. There's been one or two spotted around the lake and they'll come here. Hopefully, thick end of 200 pairs will breed over the summer. Uh, the gulls start first, so we're waiting until the, the terns are seen. We'll pull out some rafts, uh, which we'll pull out in the middle attached to those wooden posts you can see and that will hopefully mean the turns can get established without the black-headed gulls uh, getting in the way. Uh, so lots of life on the on the lake. To the right here we've got our San Martin bank. So it was very active birds, a few birds flying around. Uh, so these are birds that came back probably the last three or four weeks ago, uh, come up from Sub-Saharan Af Africa. They'll spend the summer with us. So the sand behind that, the normally na nest in the side of rivers, in the sand at rivers. Uh, so this is a concrete front, looks like sand. And the birds are flying. You can see them flicking out the, digging away, flicking out the sand to make the nest for us. And they'll nest in there uh, throughout the summer. Uh, so the whole site is big. We've got the wet areas you can see. We've got lots mm -hmm. of wet grassland areas where we get lapwing chicks are nesting already. We've already got some chicks are out there uh, having hatched. Uh, we've got reed beds, uh, which do well for birds like sedge warbler, reed warblers. Um, we'd like to get bitten breeding here. They've, they've been seen on site but haven't yet bred on site, which is a uh, one of the reasons the reserve was established and the reed beds were built to try and create a space for for those. Uh, and as you as you can see, we're in a industrial landscape, the Tees Estuary. Uh, most of it was reclaimed, 85% was lost uh, throughout the last 300 years for industry and housing development. Uh, so we're trying to get a bit back, give nature a bit more room to live here in the North Tees mm -hmm. marshes. Uh, but you can see the industry, the, uh, mm -hmm. the cooling towers over <laughs> yeah. there. Uh, the what a contrast. The, the transporter bridge, yeah. uh, the iconic yeah, symbol in Middlesbrough, yeah, uh, which opened in 1911. Yeah. So that, um, it's basically a gondola that goes across the river. Mm, exactly. Uh, yeah. So it's not in the way for ships to come, yeah. come through. It's not working today. So like no, it's, it's been out of action for a few years. Yeah. It was all refurbished in, in 2011 as part of the centenary yeah, celebrations. Okay. And it's had a bit of an issue. So they, uh, I'm hoping they're going to fix it, but it's been out of action for a while. Right. So you'll often see ships going along the edge of the reserve, yeah, right. which seems bizarre when it uh, happens. Yeah. Uh, uh, going across there, and the Cleveland Hills behind. The Cleveland Hills is where the iron ore uh, yeah. came from. So whether you can see Roseby topping that North Yorkshire landmark, which looks yeah. like the... Uh, uh, was that, that was a volcano one? Was yeah, a little Matterhorn thing. and yeah. it, it collapsed, the one side collapsed because it was undermined by iron ore. Right. So it was that combination of the iron ore coming in from the, the Cleveland Hills and the coal coming in from the Durham coal field. Uh, gave yeah. the ingredients for the iron industry, which right. created uh, Middlesbrough. It is Middlesbrough. It was about 10, 10 small cottages in 1810, 1820. And by the end of the, that century, it was 100,000 people okay. uh, living, mainly working in the iron and steel industries. Mm -hmm. And then the chemical, ICI came along and did lots of petrochemical works. So this site was left. The, the iron you can see just in front, to the left of the well, transporter bridge, yeah. uh, is, the, is the brine well. Right. So you used to pump water into the ground, dissolve the salt. There's a salt layer about a thousand feet down. Mm -hmm. It will bring all of that up, and they'd use the brine uh, in the chemical industries uh, as a key ingredient. So you've basically got these very large holes dotted around on the site, so you couldn't build on it. Right. Uh, and some of those holes have sort of subsided to create some of the ponds uh, you can see here, here today. Um, yeah, so a great place to get about three and a half thousand school kids come, come through Excellent. every year. From we, all around the country or just from... Many, many locally, many yeah. locally, and we get, I mean, before COVID, we get about 70,000, 75,000 visitors per okay. year coming through. Again, many locally, but people will, will call in, will drop in uh, when, they're, when they're passing. All right. well, thank you very much for your time.